enjoying the evening so far? Yes, I think so. I'll tell you, you're a busy crowd tonight. You're up talking, you're much freer than last evening's crowd. And I hope you can keep that up through the rest of the program because there's gonna, you're gonna have an opportunity to laugh and have a good time and so you just feel free to do that. If you wanna clap, just make yourselves at home. Um, we are Bob and Gail Kerstetter. We are the music pastors at Arcade Wesleyan Church and we are very privileged to be there. Uh, you're going to see a lot of wonderful sing, hear a lot of wonderful singing and a lot of talented people tonight. And uh, they're all from Arcade and they're doing a wonderful, wonderful job. I would just like to take a minute and thank Jack. He is managing the, our NCO club here and all of his fine helpers for the wonderful meal that they have done. If you enjoyed it, let's give them a... We have a lot of talented people, as already has been stated at Arcade, but there's two special people that I'd recognize, like to recognize tonight, and that is Don. Uh, Valerio and Sandy Locke. If you'll just come right over here so they can see who you are. And I just want to say um, that the choreography that you see tonight uh, has all been created by them. The drama, um, they are responsible for. And so the play that you're going to be seeing this evening has basically been their responsibility and a part of their work. And we just really appreciate what they do. So we just want to say thank you. For bringing around some response cards to all of your tables and there's a place for you to put your name and your address we'd like for you to take a moment right now and do that and a little bit later we'll give you an opportunity to um, express your views about this evening and we'd like to hear what you have to say about the meal and the drama and so forth and so uh, just go ahead and put your names right now on those papers as you receive them and a little bit later we'll give you a moment to fill those out on your programs tonight, which you found at your table, you found the menu and you found the cast of characters, and there was one character that has been omitted, and we want to make it really clear tonight, Lorraine Brown is also in the cast of characters, and I believe on the 19th of this month, she will be two months old, so you'll be able to pick her out. Uh, also, uh, even though this is her first acting debut, she's really stepping out and she's playing the part of a boy. So uh, you might want to keep that in mind as well. It's really nice to have Ken Benedict with us this evening. He is the video man and he is in the back and he videos all of our productions that we do at the church. And if you would like to purchase a video, if you like what you see here tonight and you would like to show it uh, maybe to some of your friends, uh, you need to see Ken after the program tonight. He has papers back there that you can fill out and I believe they're $14.95 tonight. And so you need to see him. Also, the centerpieces that are on your table tonight, if you're interested in taking one of those home, all you need to do is blow out the candle Put a $5 bill in the envelope underneath the centerpiece and you can take that home with you this evening. In just a few moments, we're going to start the program and the choir is going to come from the back and they're going to be singing. Also on your program, on the back you will see that there are several carols that are there. When the choir is singing up here, please feel free to join in. You might have to get your music or your words and get close to that candle to see them, but please feel free to join in. Uh, last night they didn't sing real good, and I know this is a singing crowd, right? right. I know this is a singing crowd, right? right? Okay, good. So when you hear the choir sing again, please feel free. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to take you on a little trip to the Smoky Mountains and we present to you a Smoky Mountain Christmas.
I don't remember putting the lights in the box like this. <laughs> How do you reckon they got this way? I don't know. It might have happened when we dropped the box down the stairs this morning. You dropped the box down the stairs? Did any of my ornaments break? Well... Only uh, two, but not any of the good ones. And look, I got cut. <gasps> you got cut? Let me see. A scratch? I couldn't find the band-aids. <laughs> Just the same, Samuel. Let's wash it and put something on it. But I like my bandage. Can we put it back on? We'll see. You know, you're getting so much like your daddy. Getting more so every day. I remember when you were about Samuel's age, you went with your daddy to chop some firewood. And you fell and you cut your leg. I remember. Your daddy come running into the house, nearly scared me to death. Your leg was bleeding, but it was just a scrape. Daddy sure made a big fuss over me, though. He even made me that cane to help me get around. We we'll probably still got it around here somewhere. Yeah. We had a lot of fun with that, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. I used to think that you and daddy made just worry too much about me. But now, every time I open my mouth, I hear you talking instead of me. <laughs> Having children of your own will do that to you. Yeah. <coughs> There's a little toy train hiding out there in the shed. I've been working on for weeks when Samuel goes to bed. I fashioned it just like the one that I had as a boy. My daddy built it for me and filled my heart with joy. Was the greatest gifts in life a hand down. Like a precious family heirloom you well in your heart like a crown. And the spark of love can't buy when you're in town Cause the greatest gifts in life are handed down He's always right beside me, getting in the way A simple little hug from him just always makes my day 
I mean, I hold him up to put that star upon the tree. I think about when my dad was the one holding me. Cause the greatest gifts in life are handed down. Like a precious family heirloom you wear in your heart like a crown. And the spark of love in a young boy's eyes you can't buy when you're in town. Cause the greatest gifts in life are handed down. Yes, the greatest gifts in life are handed down. It's not a blizzard outside, it's missing a good chance. The baby's asleep. Well, that baby's not asleep. No, he's not. He's looking all around. Yes, he is. He wants to see what's going on in here. Yeah. It's cold outside. My ears are frozen off. They should be burning. We were just talking about you. <laughs> good, I hope. Always. Hey, Grandpa, why don't you give me a hand with these lights? Now, there's a mess. How do you reckon they got that way? I don't remember putting them in the box like this. <clears throat> um, has anyone checked the lines to see if the, the phone's working yet? I just did, Jesse. The lines are still dead. That must be some snowstorm. Mama, remember when we made this? Oh, I sure do, <coughs> Samuel. You made it on my very first Christmas day here. Tell me the story again, Mama. Well, almost two years ago, the pastor brought us a very special little boy. Me! That's right. That's right. You came to spend Christmas with us, and we just couldn't let you go. You needed a mommy and a daddy, and we needed a Samuel. I'm glad you needed a Samuel. Oh, we are, we too, are son. too, son. And now we have Seth. Boy, it's going to be another great Christmas. It sure is. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Boy, I am glad Samuel and Jesse got those lights untangled. We'd never make it to town to get another string in weather like this. It's a shame that we have to rely on automobiles to get around nowadays. Why, if we still had that old horse that we had when we first got married, we wouldn't let a, li a little snow slow us down. Grandma, if we still had that horse, He'd be 50 years old. I doubt he could still pull a sled. Oh, you know <laughs> what I mean. Well, I wonder who could be out in this weather. We'll see. Oh, come on in. It's freezing outside. How can I help you? Well, my wife and I were on our way to Raleigh for the holidays when we had a little trouble. I'm afraid we're going to need some help. Well, come on in. Make yourself at home. This is my wife, Clara. And I'm Jesse. I'm John. Hi, John. This is my wife, Marianne. Hello. Hello, Marianne. We were on our way to spend Christmas with our family, but the roads are so bad, we slid into a ditch down the road. Oh, wow. I'm afraid we're going to need a tow. We couldn't pick up a signal on our car phone. Can we borrow yours? <laughs> Um, our phone's in the kitchen. <laughs> but the lines are down right now. They have been for a couple hours now. <laughs> You're welcome to stay here till they get the lines back up, and then we'll get you a, some help with your car. Thanks. 
You don't think it'll be long before they get the lines back up again, do you? At home, it usually doesn't take long at all. It's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes it takes a while out here. Let me take your coats. You make yourselves at home. Right. This is, this is my mom and dad. You can just call I... them grandma and grandpa. And this is Samuel, it's our oldest boy, and this is Seth, our newborn. <coughs> We're pleased to meet y'all. Uh, we don't really want to inconvenience you. We should be on our way so home sooner. Cole, I don't think it's likely to let up out there anytime soon. And it's no bother, really. Besides, it's Christmas. That's a good time for making new friends. Just the same, we won't be here long. We have far too much to do to be sitting around for any length of time. Mother will be frantic if we don't get there in time for our annual shopping trip. We don't like to travel with a lot of gifts, so we wait until we get there. Then we all go shopping. That way, everyone gets what they want. It's tradition. Well, we have some traditions around here, too. Um, Samuel, what's one of our traditions? Uh, we sing. Hey, yeah, now that we have more people, we can sound like the choir at church when we sing our Christmas carols. We Ooh. sure can. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe we'll just listen. Oh, come on, don't be shy now. We're not professionals or anything. <laughs> I did have the lead at the Christmas play, though, this year. <laughs> but I'm really just an amateur. Join in if you want to. Yeah. Daddy? Yes, son? Is Yuletide Carol an ancient troll? Is who a what? Is Yuletide Carol an ancient troll? You know, in my book of Christmas carols, it says, Troll the ancient Yuletide Carol. <laughs> uh, Samuel, as, as near as I can figure that, uh, it, it means sing an old Christmas song. Yeah. In fact, that's what we were just going to do. So why don't you pick one? OK, let's sing the first Noel. Oh, that's a good oh, one. I like that one. Come on. Come on. Let's sing, everybody. Hey, John, don't be shy. Just fine. Can we please try the phones again? I'll try the phone. Come on, Grandpa. Samuel, you go play in your room for a little while. 
Okay, Mama. I need to feed Seth and put him to bed. <laughs> He's a fine looking boy. Thank you. We're proud of both our boys. Mary Ann, would you like to hold Seth? Uh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm not very good with children. Well, if you'll excuse me, then I'll just feed him and put him to bed. I think I'll see if she needs any help. The phones are back up again. Let's call the wrecker and get out of here. I don't want to be stuck here any more than you do, but these people are nice. I don't want them to think we're ungrateful. Right now, I don't see what we have to be grateful for. I mean, here we are, stuck in the middle of nowhere with, with the Waltons, a car stuck in the ditch, and a crying baby. Babies do that. I'm sorry, the phone's not working yet. It's getting dark. I'd be glad to uh, get Jesse and go out to the car with you, get a few things for overnight. Overnight? Oh, can't something be done? Can't we get the car out somehow? Well, even if we could get the car out of the ditch, the road's covered this way you wouldn't get far. It may be a while before the plows get out here. I told you we should have stayed on the interstate. <sighs> How about I go make us some nice hot cider? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
hard work, but it's fun too. I don't know what Jesse and I would do without Samuel and Seth. Do you want a boy or a girl? Not that it matters, but I would like to have a girl to go with these boys. You don't understand. I'm not sure I want a baby. Just about the time I was pulling that there little fish is. out of the water, this big bass jumps up, grabs that little one in his jaws, and I pulled them both in on the same hook. That's quite a story, Grandpa. You must be some fisherman. Best fisherman I know, besides Daddy. Well, I have been practicing most of my life. I'll tell you what. You come back next spring, I'll take you to my favorite fishing home. Okay, it's a deal. All right. Claire, where's the baby's bottle? Oh. I'll take it, Grandma. Thank you. Okay, everybody, just what we need before we turn in. A cup of nice hot cider. I know, I'm ready. Help yourself, everybody. We're not shy around here. Marianne, you want some? Thank you. Oh. Samuel, where have you been all day? I've hardly seen you. Just making something, Daddy. Hey, let's turn on the Christmas tree lights. Okay, go ahead. Be careful. Glad you decided to keep me. We are too, son. at home, John. We'll see you in the morning. Let's go, Samuel. I'm coming, Mama. Samuel. Yes, ma'am? What did you mean earlier when you said you were glad Clara and Jesse decided to keep you? I'm glad they didn't send me back to the children's home. The children's home? 
Yeah, my first mom and dad died, so I had to live in the children's home for a while. So Claire and Jesse took you out of the children's home. I guess they knew your family. No, they didn't know about, about me till the pastor brought me to the church two Christmases ago. I was a surprise. Mom wasn't sure if she wanted to keep me at first, but not because of me, because she had had a little boy before who had died. Oh. Don't be sad. He's in heaven with my first mom and dad. So once I stayed here a while, they realized they couldn't live without me. <laughs> hey, you don't have any kids, do you? Well, no. No, we don't. Well, you could always go to the children's home and get one like me if you want to. I'm kind of messy sometimes. Mama says I talk too much, but I'm a pretty good kid. You sure are, Samuel. You sure are. Well, I better go to bed now. Mama won't like it if I stay up too late. And tomorrow's Christmas Eve. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. He sure is something else. He's something else. You're something else. You act like you're actually enjoying all of this. Well, maybe I am. You know, I'd forgotten that life could be so simple. But just look at these people. They don't have a lot, but you'd never know what to talk with them. And look at the gifts under the tree. While we were outside, I asked Jesse if he waited until Christmas Eve to put out the rest of the gifts. Me and my big mouth, those are the gifts. And most of them are handcrafted. He's been working on a wooden train set for Samuel for months. He said his daddy wants to make one, or his daddy made one for him, so he wants to make one for Samuel. Claire and Jesse are good parents. We will be too. It's getting late. Turn off the Christmas tree lights. We have a long drive ahead of us in the morning. You go ahead. I'll be right there. the snow fall for the first time in a while. I've forgotten how much simple things could really make you smile. But I'd spend all my time making more, wanting more. And now I've had a picture of what life's supposed to be. And with it comes a longing from the, within the heart of me To know that there is really something more So much more The most important things in life are never things at all But moments you remember and people you recall Love is all that matters to the heart. I thought I had it made. I was the model of success. I thought my life was measured by the things that I possess. But all the while my heart was wanting more, so much more. And now I see the stars that I've been reaching for are small. I even have to wonder if they matter much at all. For in God's grand design there is more. So much more The most important things in life Are never things at all But moments you remember And keep 
people you recall who fill your life with meaning and make you feel a part. For love is all that matters to the heart. Love is all that really matters to the heart. Boy, am I full. You sure showed our city friends what breakfast is all about. <laughs> Thank you. I better check that fire. Morning, everybody. Morning, Grandpa. Morning, Grandma. Grandma. I guess I better look outside, see what it's like today. No, we still don't have a phone yet. I don't think our visitors are going to be happy to hear that. No, ma'am. I heard. What's it look like outside, Grandpa? Well, I'd say we got at least another foot of snow last night. Nobody's going anywhere in this. So are you saying we're not leaving? Well, it looks that way right now. Don't worry, everything will be all right. Well, <laughs> we're going to need to get some more firewood. We're getting low. I'll help you. Oh, I don't know, Grandpa. It's, it's pretty rough out there. I'll just go alone. No, Jesse, let me help. I'll supervise. <laughs> you don't know how to chop wood. Well, I guess I'll learn. <laughs> well, I better get busy. I've got a lot to do before Christmas gets here. I can't believe this is Christmas already. It comes around so fast every year. If you'll excuse me, I need to check on the baby. I can't believe this is Christmas either.
Samuel told us last night about how he came to live here? He did. Yes. <laughs> did you get Seth at the children's home too? No. Unlike Samuel, I had nine months to prepare for Seth. <laughs> Do you ever really get prepared? Well, you just ask God to help you, and you do the best you can. Mary Ann. Do you believe in the Christmas story about the virgin birth of the baby Jesus? Yes, I guess I still do. John and I were both raised in the church, but we don't find time to go much anymore. Well, then you know that it was an angel that came to Mary and told her she was going to have a child? Well, the first thing Mary said was, how can this be? <laughs> I'm sure that as surprised as she was, she must have been frightened and confused. But the angel also said, fear not, Mary. I don't claim to be your angel, but well, maybe your being here is no accident. I mean, God had a purpose for bringing Mary's child into this world. And I believe he has a purpose for your child, too. I know you must be frightened and confused. But I find that if I can go somewhere quiet and talk to God and let him talk to me, my worries and fears fade away. Mary Ann, I think you're going to be a great mother. You're a good person, Clara. I'm sorry, I've not been very kind since I've been here. You've given me a lot to think about. I understand. Your whole holiday's been turned upside down. Uh, if you'd like to talk some more, I'll be right here. Thanks. I think I just need to sit and think for a while.
must be 40 below out there. 40 below? Why, it's not even below zero yet. I'll tell you about cold. One year, it snowed for two solid weeks. Just about the time... <coughs> Sounds like we got the phone lines up again. <laughs> Marianne, we better call your family so they won't be worried. Right. Jessica, that was the phone company. Check to see if we're back on. <laughs> Just because the phone's working doesn't mean you can drive out of here. I agree, John. You and Marianne are welcome to spend Christmas here with us. Well, I don't know, Jesse. Isn't there something we can do? Surely there is. I don't know, Grandpa. What do you think? Well, I told you what I think. The weather's even worse than it was yesterday. You'd be taking a mighty chance trying to leave now. Well, I don't like it either, but it looks like we don't have much choice. Well, I guess if we have to be snowbound, this is as good a place as any. I'll call Mother and let her know what happened. Well, all right. Jesse, we really appreciate this. Are you sure we're not imposing? Oh, uh, now don't you give it another thought. We're glad to help you out. It's going to be a great Christmas. things have turned out this way. It's not the ideal Christmas. But you don't seem as upset as before. Being upset wasn't helping anything. And besides, I've been doing some thinking. John, why do you think we're really here? Maybe we're not here by accident. Sometimes things happen for a reason. And well, oh, I don't know. Hi. I figured you wouldn't be going any place. So I made you a present. <laughs> you did? Samuel, that was very sweet of you, but you didn't have to do that. Yes, I did. Because this is the time for giving, so that's what I'm doing. Thank you, Samuel. What is it? You'll see tomorrow. It's not Christmas yet. <laughs> Grandpa always reads us the Christmas story on Christmas Eve. Can we do that now? I think that's sure. good. Sure can. Come on, everybody. Let's try. Gather round. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. I don't know how I am. Forth her first I've been person. thinking and struggling. We've taught, Great we've not taught. Swamp and we have prayed. And laid him in I know. danger. <laughs> I knew you were having there was time. Snow. I've been wanting to help you. Oh. I just didn't know what to do. And there were. Oh. Yes. There was a time when we would have prayed together. But somewhere we stopped leaning on him. Now we're looking for answers. I was talking with Clara earlier today, and she said something along those lines. I wonder why she was different, why I couldn't be that happy. I mean, look at everything we have. We both have our careers, lots of friends, a great house. But after talking with her, I realized why she's different. She's a good person, and her love for her family is evident. 
But even more than that, her belief in God is so strong. I believe in God, but I'd forgotten what it was like to talk with him every day and have him really be a part of my life. Marianne, it's okay. We need to work through this together. The good thing is we're at least asking the Lord to help, and that's a good start. We won't have all the answers now, but we'll be more at peace with ourselves as we work through this together. I feel better already. I was listening to Grandpa read the Christmas story, and everything that I'd been thinking and feeling and dealing with just kept flooding back. All I could think about was getting off this mountain and into the city. I couldn't wait to see Mother and start going shopping and going to parties. I thought I could forget all our troubles and let the Christmas spirit get me through. But that's not really Christmas, is it? No, that doesn't sound much like Christmas to me either anymore. You know, I've been trying to remember the last time I heard the Christmas story read from the Bible. I'm sorry to say, I don't remember. I think it's safe to say we've learned a few things from our ruined holiday vacation. I'm glad. <laughs> me too. No, I mean I'm glad our holiday was ruined. John, I think we'll be good parents too. What a great Christmas. It came to pass as the angels were gone away from men in the heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. I like that story. I do too. Come here, Samuel. You know, that's what Christmas is all about. It's not the presents you get under the tree or, or all the neat things you do during that Christmas season. It's all about how the Lord Jesus came to us as a baby. Samuel, he came for us. I want you to always remember that, son. I will, Daddy. And we will too, Jesse. We just want to thank you so much for taking us in and, and being so good to us. This is definitely a Christmas we'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> and we may start a few new Christmas traditions of our own since we've had a chance to share on some of yours. Yeah, that city fight Christmas can't hold a candle to all this, can it? <laughs> I wouldn't have agreed with you two days ago, but I'm beginning to think you're right. Well, maybe next year we can do this again. Only, let's plan it. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of planning, we'll be needing to borrow Seth's cradle the next time we're here. Yes, I'm going to be a father. Congratulations. Congratulations. A baby. Swim hey, that's me. Will you be getting one from the ch children's home? Well, well. Samuel, do you remember when Seth was born? Oh, OK, never mind. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's eat. Good idea. All right. Good idea, Grandma. Good idea. This is turkey. Yeah.
wasn't that fun. I hope you enjoyed that tonight. I did, and I got to see it last night, too. But it's amazing, isn't it, when you think about the impact of a baby, how that can change a life, and some of the changes that, uh, that of course, come about are your time is not your own. You used to be able to think you could sleep through the night until the little one comes along, and then they've got different alarm clocks. And you might think that your life is your own and your plans for your life are your own, but the little one has other plans too. And you have to begin to make some sacrifices. And it's amazing how those little things can be so expensive over time. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we married off our daughter on Friday. <laughs> but as, as children come in and make changes in our lives, the babe of Bethlehem makes changes too. He, there's a demand on our time. There's a demand for sacrifice. And the things that we always wanted to do, somehow we begin to live for others. We can't just be selfish and focused on the things that we think are important. And I was reflecting on this play and uh, just kind of the simple stories that come out of it. This, the Waltons, that's great. This, this is a simple set. But uh, the story kind of brought up some core values that I hope that resonated in you as you saw this tonight. And I, I know that in me, at least, I saw several. And one is just the simplicity of Christmas. Don't you feel like uh, you're in a little time capsule here tonight and you forget where you have come from and the things you are yet to go to? And, and just in this time frame, we begin to remember how simple things really are supposed to be. And how, somehow we complicate life, don't we? We make things harder and more difficult than they really need to be. And along with uh, that as a value, love. I saw love here uh, in the family. They loved each other. Uh, they enjoyed being together. And, and I trust that was something that you saw as well. Uh, family was an important ingredient, an important value. And I know that uh, family is important to you. And I trust all the more so. But there also was faith. There was the importance of faith. Simplicity, love, family, and faith. Those are things I think that you and I can always be reminded to keep in focus and in perspective, especially as we go into the holiday times. You know, it's so easy to lose perspective. It's so easy to get caught up in just everything else. And then we come rushing and crashing into the holiday season of Christmas and we're not even rested to celebrate. We can't do that until after the new year begins. And it's not supposed to be that way. I, I wonder, just to ask you a couple questions. You know, as you reflect on the Christmas time coming, this was all about a change of a heart. And some, somehow we all need changes in our hearts from time to time. Maybe there's some attitudes that you are experiencing and living with right now that you recognize, boy, I'd like to change that. I wish there was something I could do to make that one different. I wish I didn't struggle with that attitude or that pattern or whatever it is. But let me ask you just a couple rhetorical questions so you can answer in your own heart. Don't answer out loud. Do you need to have a change of heart? Now, is there anything going on in you that uh, you would say, boy, I'd like to make a change? Because Christmas is a great time for making change. It's a great time for, for new beginnings. But let me just ask you, where is God in your life? Where is God in your family? Where is God in your holidays? If you need to make change, this is a great time to do it. And you have uh, a couple days yet before Christmas that you can get everything in perspective. You can get everything into balance before you have to. So I just challenge you with this great presentation tonight to remember that a lot of times it's the simple things that are the most meaningful. The love the family, the faith, and that child of Bethlehem will make some changes. But have you ever noticed how those children grow up and they bring about joy? They bring about satisfaction. They bring about a real sense of, of accomplishment and you just want to enjoy what they have become. Same thing happens with Christ in the life. 
even though there's a price to be paid, there's sacrifices along the way, you can't always just live for yourself, yet there's joy, there's satisfaction, there's contentment with a life that's been lived right. Amen? Well, I want to thank you for coming tonight, for being a part of this dinner theater, sharing this evening with us and with our, the people from our church that really have spent a lot of time putting this together. And I'd like to ask you, if you would, just to thank them one more time from the bottom of your hearts for what they've done for us. <laughs> Bob and Gail Kerstetter gave preference to others who have worked hard in this, but I think they deserve a special hand for their leadership in this as well. Bob and Gail, I don't know where you are, but stand up in the back somewhere. You have on your tables these little red cards, and uh, in just a moment, I'm going to pray and close our time together in prayer, but uh, before you leave, would you just take some time and fill those out and just leave them on the table? And again, if you would like the centerpieces, uh, they're very close to my heart, but feel free to um, buy one of those that goes to the music department to help them out. These were the centerpieces at the wedding, so that's why. But let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer together. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the privilege of this evening where we've been able to share a meal around a table with family and friends, a chance to share together in another environment or context than we normally would, but then to be able to witness this presentation and to be touched and moved by it. Thank you for what you did so many years ago to touch us and move us in the babe of Bethlehem. Lord, would you let this Christmas be meaningful to us as we consider what are the core values of our life? What are the things of utmost importance? And get back to those things. And would you help us as we search for the holidays to make sure that you're a part of it? that you're part of our family celebration, that you're a part of our life. Again, I thank you for tonight and for what you're going to do in each one of our lives as we look to have our hearts changed to be more of the men and the women that you desire us to be. So grace us with your presence and bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>